Hey, it's Press Lovers. Mark here from Whole Latte Love. Today we're going to take a look at four different types of boilers you might find in an espresso machine. Um, so we got a thermo block, we've got a single boiler, a heat exchange boiler, and a dual boiler. Got some really cool cutaways here so we can get you deep inside. We're going to get kind of geeky here, but we'll talk about the thermal characteristics and you know why you might choose one over the other. And We'll talk about how they work in the different parts. So we'll get right to it. We'll start with a thermoblock boiler. This is what you're going to find in a, you know, a lower cost entry level appliance grade type espresso maker, maybe a super automatic espresso machine. Um, you know, they do okay, uh, but they don't have, you know, they're not going to be a good, as good as what we're going to look at down the line here. So there's basically a block of alum aluminum, and inside, water's going to come in one of these pipes and out the other one, and it spirals through inside of this aluminum block. Um, these pipes are generally stainless steel that run through them inside that aluminum block. And then there's a heating element that's embedded in the boiler that heats the water. Now, they're generally going to keep the water in the boiler um, at a certain temperature um, and then kick on more heat as water goes through the boiler. So it kind of is heating water on demand at some times. Now this one happens to have two heating elements, one on the outside, this might help keep the boiler warm, and then one on the inside. But what I've got, which is cool, is to show you the inside of this. So we did cut one open here. So here's what's going on in there. So you can see the holes on the outside edge here. This is where the water is going to spiral up through. And then these other areas here, these are the heating elements that also go through the boiler. That's what heats the water. Now, it's going to be kind of hard to see, but notice how narrow the channels are here. So these machines are going to be really susceptible to scale buildup. So you'll want to use a good quality water, and if you have a machine, you need to descale it uh, when, you know, on schedule, uh, a lot of machines are going to tell you when to do that. You know, more semi-automatic machines are going to have to base that on a manufacturer's recommendation as to when to do the descaling. Because if these plug up, it's really going to affect your, the performance of your machine. Um, so that's the thermoblock boiler. Next up, we're going to go to a single boiler. This one happens to be out of a Gaja Classic. And I've got it set up like this so you can see how uh, the portafilter is always sitting in contact with a lot of warm water. Now, on a machine like a Gaja Classic or any semi-automatic, when not in use, you want to keep your portafilter in the group so that the portafilter warms up as well. So I'm going to take this off. We'll take a look inside here in a second. Um, one thing we like about the Gaja Classic is full size and weight commercial style portafilter in that. So this retains a lot of heat and having that heat retention is good. It helps even out the temperatures so you get really nice brew temperatures on that. But let's take a look at this boiler. So now on the outside of the boiler, a couple heating elements here. This, boi this boiler is going to use two thermostats. One. Uh, is going to be used when you're just going to brew and then you kick on the steam. Then it's got another thermostat that registers the steam temperature. Um, another thing we like about the Classic, well, let's take a look inside. So here's the inside of that boiler. So if, as opposed to those little tiny tubes running through a boiler, you have an actual boiler that's full of water here. Um, so a higher volume of water. Um, at the bottom here, this is called the group head where the portafilter locks into. This is really heavy, so it's got a lot of th what we call thermal mass, so it helps even out the temperature here. Now inside, you can see this one's got a little scale happening here. Um, I'll show you on the bottom of the boiler here where there's even more. Um, but in this boiler, what happens when you go up to steaming temperatures, it's sitting up like this, then it creates steam inside of there. Another thing we like about the Classic, it's one of the fastest single boiler machines to be ready to steam. Uh, it's about 45 seconds to the machine says it's steam ready. We like to start it at about 35 seconds. What happens when you start before it says it's steam ready, it's got a, a fair amount of steam in there, but those heating elements stay on. If you wait till it says it's steam ready, then those heating elements are going to kick off. So if you start before it says it's actually steam ready, you can get actually more steam created. A little trick. Now let's take a look at the bottom of this. You can see we ha do have some more scale build up right here. Um, now, when you, you want to use good water in your machine, or, or you're going to get, get this. And even if you're using a, a good water, you're still going to get some scale. So do descale your machine when it tells you to. I'm just going to knock a little bit of that out. So there's that scale. You get too much in there, and I've seen boilers packed full of scale, like they've been used for years, and nobody's ever descaled them. You know, literal, you know, inch-thick scale inside of these things. 
So do take care of your machine. What happens if you let it go, that scale can break off and plug things up. So you really wanna take care of things. Now let's move up to a heat exchange boiler. So here on the class, on the uh, single boiler, we had thermostats on the outside of the boiler. This is a heat exchange boiler. Um, this one is gonna use a pressure stat. I'm gonna turn the machine here so you can see the pressure stat. So this is a pressure stat. And in this boiler, it's just measure, measuring the pressure that's inside the boiler, this device here, and that is gonna be connected to the heating element and tell the boiler when to heat and when to not heat. So the boiler reaches a certain pressure, which re relates to a temperature. When it reaches that pressure, it kicks the element off, then the pressure is gonna drop, then the element's gonna kick back on. Now I wanna show you a little graph here. This is what the, the typical temperature inside a heat exchange boiler controlled by a pressure stat looks like. And you'll see that it rises, then falls, and rises, then falls. We're gonna take a look at a PID machine in a second and talk about how they keep an incredibly uh, constant temperature. And you can see that in the graph, the, the representation of the P, uh, temperature inside a PID controlled boiler. But let's take a closer look at this one. Let's, we'll start up top here. Right up top, first thing on this side, this is a fill probe. So all this does is senses the water level in the boiler. So that would be in the boiler. When the water level hits that probe, it stop, the boiler stops filling. When it drops below the level of that probe, the boil, boiler will automatically fill. Right next to that, we have a safety valve. It releases pressure. So this is set when it hits a certain pressure, it will release pressure from the boiler. If you didn't have something like that, there is a potential that one of these could get far too much pressure in it and get kind of dangerous. Then next to that, a vacuum relief valve. What happens when the machine is cold is this valve allows the boiler to open to outside air pressure. As steam builds up in the boiler, you get to, you know, like, uh, 100 degrees C, 212, steam starts to form and it closes this valve. So when one of these machines heats up, you'll hear a little hissing, there'll be a little, a little bit of moisture coming out of this until the valve closes. Up front here, um, a couple of high limit switches. These are like circuit breakers. So if they sense a temperature that's too high, they will stop the machine from heating. These ones happen to be resettable. So if you ever have a boiler that's not heating for some reason, you can open up your machine and try and push those down and see if that doesn't take care of it. But let's take a look inside and see how the heat exchange section works. Again, we have these really nice cutaway models that are gonna allow us to do that. So in this boiler, the water level, you know, the probe sits about here. You can't really see it, it's way in the back of the machine. The heating element is back in there as well. Uh, but the water level is gonna sit eh, somewhere in this area. So you've got water down here, steam up here. Now this part right here, this is where the brew water is coming through. Now this is cut away as well, so you can see inside, normally there wouldn't be a hole right here. And the brew water is kept separate from the water that you're gonna create steam with or use for hot water out of your machine. So it just exchanges heat into this section. Now we have an E61 group on this machine, so there's a constant thermosiphon that happens. So even when the machine is just sitting idle, water is always flowing out to the group here, so it comes off the top through convection, out to the group, circulates through this area right here, then back down into the bottom of the boiler. Because this boiler is gonna run internally, you know, maybe 250, 260 degrees Fahrenheit, and you don't want brew water that, that is that hot. So what happens is, in this heat exchange section, you're constantly moving heat out, you're flowing it out, it's cooling down, coming back, so you get a really good brew temperature. Um, also on the E61 group, you know, a ton of thermal mass here. These things weigh like six, seven pounds. Um, so they get really hot, as you probably know if you've ever accidentally touched one on a heated up machine. But that helps with the thermal stability. Uh, what else we got going on here? Um, oh, so, yeah, so here's, here's the mushroom. One thing, I happen to have a flow control device on this one. Um, but notice this, the uh, mushroom here. This is the mushroom right here. This comes right out. And this is a place that you can check for scale if you want to. Um, a lot of times that'll be the, one of the places you can look at, see, hey, is my machine scaling? You can pull that out and take a look. But I want you to notice like on ECM and Profitech machines, um, they use a stainless steel mushroom now in all their machines. Used to, used to be they were chrome plated. Um, this was a chrome plated one. And you can see it gets pitting on here. Um, and every once in a while you might see like a little shiny flake in your espresso, that's not good. So I really like that they've gone to the stainless steel. Um, you can see how brew water flows through this. Generally, the brew water is gonna come up through the top, there's a little orifice up here, then down through the mushroom internally, 
out through this channel and then out to your brew group. Um, but really, really nice setup. Um, again, this thermostat or pressure stat controlled boiler. So you do have some variation in temperature and in a pressure stat heat exchange machine. Generally, you're gonna do a cooling flush. As these sit idle, the water will overheat just a little bit in this section. So you generally do a little cooling flush until that flow, until you see a nice flow coming out of your group that's not all bubbly or spurty or steamy. So you have a nice even flow. So that's a pressure stat heat exchange boiler. Um, Steam's going to come off the top of the boiler. If you're getting hot water out of your machine, it's going to come off the bottom of the boiler. But let's go to the next level now. Here is a PID dual boiler machine. This, I believe, is from a Profitech Pro 700. Um, if you have an ECM Synchronic, it's going to be pretty much identical to this setup. So here are the PID wires. So this is what, instead of a pressure stat on these, we have a probe in here that measures the temperature in both boilers. And with PID, what happens is we use very, very short, you know, once the boiler is up to temperature, very, very short energizing of the heating element here. So we keep a very, very constant temperature in both the boilers. We do have uh, the safeties up here um, that will monitor. So you have, these are the high limit switches. So you're gonna monitor the boiler. If it gets too hot, it's gonna cut it off. These ones happen not to be resettable here. Um, Here's the heating element here. And again, we're gonna have that flow, that constant convective thermosiphon flow out to the group and back. So water is gonna be constantly flowing out to the group and back down to the bottom boiler and back through. So that's gonna heat up everything here and give you a really nice, solid, constant temperature. PID this, you know, PID with a separate brew boiler, that's gonna give you the most constant temperatures you can get. I'll take a look over here at the steam boiler. And again, there's that, there's that water level probe. There isn't one in the brew boiler. That fills all by itself automatically. Um, so you're gonna have water up to here in the boiler when it's full, steam up here. We still, we have those safeties again like we had. Uh, so if the pressure gets too high, it will be released here. And then we have a vacuum relief valve right here. Um, again, you'll hear that hissing as the machine uh, heats up. Little, with this one, you can see it's got a little nipple on it, so there's actually a tube on this, so no internal venting of moisture uh, into the machine when it heats up. All this moisture will be carried out of the machine. Now let's take a little look. I do have the flow control on this. I've got lots of videos. I'll link one down in the description about wh what flow control can do for you. Basically, it's just a, a valve up in here that you can control the flow rate over your coffee. So if you want to do those really long, low flow pre-infusions to maybe you know, work with a very fresh coffee, um, it really helps a lot, makes a huge difference, gives you capabilities of much more expensive machines. Um, but a really nice device. Again, do check out the video down in the description for that. Um, also, I can't put it on here, but if you have a flow control, you're also gonna have a group pressure gauge that's gonna be mounted right here. And that's gonna give you, you can see how close it is to the actual coffee. It's gonna give you the actual pressure that's on your coffee and allow you, that can help you control your flow rates and different things. Um, but a really nice feature with that. Um, Again, we got the E61 group, same flow here. Um, one thing that has to happen both in a heat exchange machine and this machine is very uh, precise sizing, what's called a flow restrictor in here that controls the thermosiphon. So we get really accurate temperatures. Uh, machine designers, manufacturers really work with those a lot to get the temperatures just right. Um, I'll show you, here's an actual heating element that would be inside one of these boiler boilers, pulled it out. Um, and this is the business end of heating up your water for your, for your brewing, your steam and your, your hot water. Um, again, if you, want, if you want the best temperature consistency, PID is a way to go in a dual boiler machine. Um, these uh, Proftec and ECM, these happen to be stainless steel boilers. Um, I really do like these a lot. I honestly don't really have a huge preference between a copper boiler or, or brass or that kind of thing. Um, they're all sized well. They all have really nice thermal characteristics. Um, I do think that the stainless boilers do look a, a little nicer when you open up a machine. They, you know, the copper ones, they tend to, to get a little green or what have you. Um, and now, what you don't see on this, obviously in, in, a, in a machine where these are installed, you would have the insulated blanket like you have over here that surrounds both those boilers and helps to 
keep the heat contained. So that's kind of, that's a look at the four different types of boilers. Again, we kind of went up from those thermal blocks, which you'll find in the, uh, you know, entry level espresso appliance type machines or super automatic machines, the single boiler machines, um, like this one from the Gaja Classic Pro. And again, on a single boiler, you're always waiting for a, between, to get to steam temperature to a heat exchange boiler where you can brew and steam at the same time. Um, this one happens to be controlled by a pressure stat. There are machines that are PID heat exchange uh, machines, and they do really, really well. I've done a lot of testing with those uh, from a number of manufacturers, and they actually, you can brew usually with those without doing the cooling flush, but if you have a pressure stat machine, you're gonna do a cooling flush. And then just to recap, you know, the, the best you can do really at this level is a dual boiler PID controlled machine um, like you'd find and this is the exact setup you'd find in like a Proftec Pro 700 or an ECM Synchronica. So that's a really geeky look at the uh, boilers. If you have any questions about that, do use the comments. I'm Mark, I wanna thank you for watching. You know, if you like this stuff and you haven't subscribed, do subscribe to the channel. And then we hope to see you back here real soon for more of the best on everything coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love.